This is USVI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. A new executive order here in the territory has eased some restrictions which were put into place because of the pandemic. Under the new directive, patrons can now sit at the bar at VI establishments. Restaurant, bar, and club patrons can have a seat at the bar. However, congregating and standing around a bar in the counter are still prohibited. Alcohol or food can be served only to patrons who are seated at designated seats at the bar counter. And those bar seats have to be placed so that each party is at least four feet away from any other party or table. And Governor Albert Bryan Jr. is also easing restrictions for taxi drivers. The change to the passenger limits for taxis, taxi vans, safaris, and limos can raise their passenger limits from 50% to 75% of allowed capacity now. However, if the passengers are all of the same family or group, the taxi cab or safari may exceed the limitation on capacity. Masks, though, we're told, must be worn by the driver and passengers at all times while in the vehicles. The World Health Organization says COVID-19 cases are down 14% worldwide, and it says deaths are down 2% right now. According to the WHO, the European region is reporting the biggest decline. Despite the global drop, the organization notes cases and deaths still remain high in some countries. While most industries have managed to slowly start getting the wheels turning again, there's one industry that has yet to recover, and we're talking about the cruise industry which is why the industry launched a campaign recently called Ready, Set, Sail as a plea to the CDC to let them leave the dock. Our Alanis Quinones has the story. As much as all of us have been affected by the COVID pandemic, both personally, professionally, and as an industry, there is no segment of our industry that has been dealt a more severe blow than the cruise industry. This is a claim of the tourism and cruise lines industry after more than a year of losses. The cruise industry voluntarily suspended operations in March 2020. Then the CDC issued suspension orders and later on conditional sale orders that they claim weren't clear to begin with. Cruise lines now launch a campaign called Ready, Set, Sail which is a call to action for the CDC asking them to allow the 90-day process it takes to resume operations by summer. Our rationale for this was simple. Over the past eight months, a highly controlled resumption of cruising has continued in Europe, Asia, and the South Pacific, with nearly 400,000 passengers sailing to date in more than 10 major cruise markets. These voyages were successfully completed with industry-leading protocols that have effectively mitigated the spread of COVID-19. Additional sailings are planned in the Med and the Caribbean later this summer. In fact, uh, cruising from Greece just uh, began this week. The very small fraction of reported COVID cases that have occurred on these ships since last July prove that the protocols that we have in place work as intended. The industry claims the outdated conditional sale order, as they described it, which was issued more than seven months ago, does not reflect the proven advancements of the industry nor the benefit vaccines add to the equation. For um, too long, um, as many of you know, the cruise industry in the United States has been the only industry that has been expressly prohibited from operating even as other industries have either been able to open up or even those that have been able to continue operating throughout the pandemic. Needless to say, this has had a significant impact on jobs as the cruise industry generates almost half a million, in fact, 450,000 U.S. jobs that generates $56 billion in economic in impact for the United States annually. Most of which CLIA highlights extend beyond the cruise lines and include, in a ripple effect, independent business owners employed by small and medium businesses that include, for example, travel agents, taxi drivers, baggage handlers, as well as airlines, hotels, and restaurant workers. Due to this suspension, more than 350,000 of those jobs have been lost in the United States. These jobs have been lost because nearly 14 million cruisers who would normally sail from U.S. ports have been prevented from sailing due to either the no-sale order or now the conditional sale order. 
The protocols they've established in the plan include a commitment to vaccinate at least 90% of the passengers and crew, requirement of 100% testing and increased ventilation. Reporting from Puerto Rico, Alanis Quiñones. I know many folks and businesses here in the VI anxious for those cruises to resume again this summer. We'll just wait and see. Two federal jail guards accused of failing to keep watch over Jeffrey Epstein the night he killed himself have reached an agreement with prosecutors. In the agreement, the two guards admit they, quote, willfully and knowingly falsified documents stating they had regularly checked on Epstein and other cells in the special housing unit in Man the Manhattan Correctional Facility. Epstein, a multimillionaire with properties in the Virgin Islands, was being held without bail while awaiting trial on federal sex trafficking charges when he took his own life. The two guards, Tova Noel and Michael Thomas, will be under pretrial supervision for six months as part of a deferred prosecution agreement. They'll both also have to perform 100 hours of community service, and the two guards will have to cooperate with a pending Department of Justice Inspector General review. A judge has yet to sign off on the deal, but it does have the approval of the Federal Pretrial Services Division. In continuing coverage, the Caribbean Music Institute Orchestra has a special collaboration last weekend in St. Thomas. Whole Grammy Award-winning trumpeteer and musical directors for Hollywood's Tyler Perry performed with the 15-piece orchestra this past weekend. His name is Melvin Jones, and he jammed with major musical icons, including Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Stevie Wonder, and Patti LaBelle. Some big names to be able to perform with. What a special guy. And he spent some time with the youth who performed in St. Thomas, and he shared the experience with our USVI News, Ali bourne -Vanette. I'm here with Melvin Jones, one of the incredible musicians. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. What was it like being up there on stage, being able to perform and share what you do with the community? Um, it's kind of surreal because I, I get a chance to work with kids of all different ages, but you, you, it's, it's a small ratio of those kids that you feel really receive what you give and kind of give it back. And I feel like the entire stage just now, they were giving me everything that I gave them and then some. So for me, I, I was just like a kid in a candy store. I can imagine, I mean, especially in light of everything that's going on, yeah. you know, just to be up there and, you know, to, you know, I was speaking with one of the, the musicians earlier and it's like, you all have been inside for so long. Right. And um, I think when, when COVID happened, when, when the first shutdowns happened, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and we were working on a TV show at the time. And when everything went dark that week, you know, we instantly shifted to digital. So we, we were working throughout, but we never were working with each other in, in the sense of what we were accustomed to. So this was probably one of the first times being in front of people again, being able to see smiling faces, being able to communicate with the students face to face. This was a, so this, this was a definite positive, you know, thing for me. Anything else that you'd like to share? It's important to just see what's possible when people invest in the kids, just in general. I know it's something that's often said, but it's never actually followed through in a larger sense. And I feel like what happened here tonight is a model for what can happen anywhere as long as people, you know, follow through with the idea of the kids actually being the future. Because I feel that an event like this is me passing the baton on. And that there's no greater joy in being a musician than bringing up the next musician. And here's a look at some of the upcoming performances. The Forum brings high quality live concert and live screening of opera and theater to St. Thomas. The 2021-22 season will begin on October 16th with the Ritz Chamber Players and include seven live concerts, four live screenings of the Metropolitan Opera performances and a lot more. So we're going to keep you updated on these events and future classical and jazz opportunities for young local musicians and of course we're going to have a full list of all the performances on our website usvicbs.com